Fine. So let's try to check out now. It is used to maintain the output uh, of the web form temporarily for a specific period of time such that whenever a client sends a request instead of processing the request the response will be given from the cache okay so what is caching concept means so, uh, it will try to maintain the output of the web form for a specific period of time such that whenever a client sends a request instead of processing the request the response will be given from the cache okay in this way it is going to process now we have uh, caching is of two types one is called as like uh, client side caching the other one we call it as server side caching these are the two types of cachings that you have here when you say something called it as a client side caching then what happens is whenever the cache content is maintained at the client system then it is said to be client side caching so whatever the page you are going to send a request if that particular response is maintained at the client system then we call it as client side caching a small note is like um, asp.net web forms will be set with client side caching implicitly you can asp.net web forms will set the client will set with client side caching implicitly so you don't have to do anything by default uh, when you try to work with the asp.net web form automatically a client side caching will be set which means that when a client sends a request for the first time once the page has been processed the next time from the same system if a client sends a request and all whatever the content that has been cached it will not process instead of it directly it will dump that contents onto the screen so in that way it is going to be available next we have a something called as server side caching so whenever the cache content is maintained at the server then it is said to be server side caching okay whenever the cache content is maintained at the server then it is said to be server side caching and uh, asp.net supports the following server side caching okay the asp.net supports the following server side caching methods we have something called as page output cache page fragmentation cache we have something called as substitution cache we have a concept like data cache these are the different types of caching that are available for us and one important thing you need to remember that is like uh, when a client sends a cache content then what happens is the complete page is processed for the first client once the page has been processed for the first client whatever the output the user is going to get that output will be maintained at the web server such that if any client if he we can such that if any client if he sends a further request and all then what happens is this is going to give the output directly from the cache content in that way it will try to work as a result say for example if it is a web okay if it is a website with uh, some kind of online content and all okay if there is a website with online content then what happens is this particular website if uh, let's say online content like in the sense a uh, stock market and all 
When you say stock market, the content of the site will be frequently updated for us. As a result, if a first client sends a request, if the page is processed, and uh, once the page has been completed process, for the next client, if it gets the uh, cache content and all, then automatically it will not work properly. So we have to take care about this kind of scenarios. So when we have to use this ca server side caching means, server side caching should be used if and only if whenever the client sends a request very frequently for a web form okay we know the client sends a request very frequently for a web form and if the contents of the web form is static so whenever the contents of the web form is static, then also we uh, we can go forward. Both the things should be satisfied. If one is satisfied and if other one is not satisfied, you should, it's not advisable to go for the server side caching and all. You should get more requests and the content should not be modified. And it doesn't mean that the pages should not interact with database and all. The pages can interact with the database, but the only thing is the content should be static, means the content should not be modified. Okay, now let's try to check out the first type of caching that we have here. That is called as page output cache. So what is page output cache means? Whenever the output of the web form, okay, whenever the output of the web form Okay, whenever the complete output of the web form is maintained as the cache, then it is said to be okay. Whenever the complete output of the web form is maintained as a cache, then it is said to be page output cache. Means what it will happen in this type of caching is a client sends a request, the page has been processed whatever the result you are going to get it, the complete output is maintained as a cache content. In that way it is going to maintain for us. Okay, now what happens here is, okay, then it is said to be this thing. And to set this particular page output cache, what we need to do is, you should say output cache duration equal to some seconds and there is one particular attribute that you need to set which is called test vary by param where you can just assign some kind of variable or you can pass a control name or you can just specify something called as say none you can just pass off any of this particular information so whenever you try to set this particular thing, then we can take the support of output cache. Okay, then we can take the support of output cache. So what is page output cache? The page output cache is going to be used for maintaining this thing. So now let us try to check it out, how we can just work with this.